This was the last parliamentary week before recess, and what a cliffhanger for us to end on. Has Scottish politics ever been more interesting? From the prospect of an independence referendum, the imposition of another Prime Minister we don't support, and a whole myriad of international issues. It won't come as any surprise that I have no confidence in any UK government. So it was an easy decision for me to vote against this dysfunctional government in the confidence vote. In other votes, I continued to oppose the international treaty-breaking Northern Ireland Protocol Bill for all the reasons I have outlined before. The big story this week is not that a Tory leadership candidate thinks Darlington is in Scotland, but that the Supreme Court has rejected the UK government's request to throw out the case on whether Scotland can hold a lawful referendum. This will now be heard on the 11th to the 12th of October. Meanwhile, the UK parties are all determined that there should be no democratic way for Scotland to leave the voluntary union and no longer even recognise Scotland's right to self-determination. Since 2014, the Tory party have had more Prime Ministers than we've had referendums. May I remind the PM of the Smith Commission report that states it is agreed by all parties that nothing in this report prevents Scotland becoming an independent country. Therefore, does the Prime Minister believe in a democracy and will he respect the people of Scotland's right to self-determination? This is not a democracy, while electoral mandates are not respected. Increasingly, commentators and others are recognising that while you can oppose independence, denying that an elected majority government has a mandate isn't tenable. And I found time to visit the Wallace Memorial at Smithfield this week. And it's a timely reminder that he didn't have a Section 30 order and we don't need one either. What we do need is popular support. If a democratic referendum is denied to us, then we will use a democratic election instead. In the other business this week, I questioned ministers over defence and international affairs, all areas where independence would allow us to take decisions for ourselves. The MI5 Director General has said the most game-changing challenge we face comes from the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah, I just really like this deal, on top of which it sets a very dangerous precedent for our future trade deals <coughs> with nations yeah, yeah. like India, Mexico and Canada, where we'll be dealing with far more sensitive products. Could we have a statement from government calling on Bahrain to return Dr Asinghe's research and to release him and other political opposition leaders immediately. I called out the Tories over their dodgy PPE contracts. The Tories flogged off PPE contracts to party donors and friends of ministers through their unlawful VIP PPE layer. With Covid figures still rising, please do take precautions to stay safe. Vaccination remains one of the most important ways to protect yourself and others against COVID-19. As always, if you require an advice surgery appointment or a visit to your local group or business, then contact me on 01506 654415 or email martin.day.mp at parliament.uk. Until next week, stay safe. Oh.